If you are someone who has one or more cloud certifications from any of the cloud providers, or you have been working in one of the cloud services for over a year, then here's the only cloud security career roadmap you'll ever need, getting your first senior or principal cloud security engineering role. Now, this video contains seven different cloud security areas that senior engineers in large companies work on, which you can steal to be the best candidate when you apply for that next senior cloud security engineer role. Now, towards the end, I'll also share free resources on how to work with other senior cloud security professionals to build expert level competencies in these areas. The whole roadmap should take about two to three months to complete, depending on how much time you dedicate to learning each of the areas. But by the end of this, you will be one of the top job candidates for any senior cloud security role out there. So let's just jump right into it. The first thing I would like you to work on is multi-cloud projects. Now, most organizations these days have become multi-cloud just by the nature of there are more services available from each of the cloud service provider and you want to pick the best one. So most businesses have ended up with Amazon, Google, Azure, IBM, a lot of these other different providers that you have to work with. Now, having an understanding of each one of these cloud service providers is beneficial as a senior because as a senior, you're not only working on a specific problem and a business use case, you're able to expand that to more complex business use case. Like if you have an application that's hosted in AWS, Yes, because OpenAI is a Microsoft company, your business has decided Azure is a place where we'll be doing the AI projects. You would be required as a senior cloud security engineer to build a data connection to securely transmit data between your AWS cloud as well as your Azure cloud. What would that look like? What's the plumbing required for you to open up the tap in AWS and release the data in Azure on the other way around as well. So you can get that whole pipe back in again. Now you don't have to be an expert in Azure unless you obviously want to be because you're bored of your current cloud that you may be working in. You may decide to move to another cloud provider because you just want to specialize in. Now that is also part of being multi-cloud because these days having knowledge of more than one cloud definitely goes a long way in helping you becoming a senior because you're able to help with a lot more complex challenges, whether it's AI projects, container projects, or simply doing backup and recovery across multiple cloud providers. Which also leads me to the second area, which probably many would have already heard of, AI, yes. AI security would be paramount in the coming years. And as you would have seen with the explosion of the usage for ChatGPT, Claude, and all the other AI projects, you will find that as a senior person, your responsibility to secure AI-based applications that are using these AI capabilities or building these AI capabilities in businesses is going to be super important, especially your understanding of what kind of services are available for AI from the cloud service providers, whether it's AWS, Azure, they are probably the two most popular cloud service providers with AI capabilities. Sorry, Google Cloud, I haven't heard a lot from you yet, but I'm pretty sure you're coming around the corner only. So the two parts you would have to worry about is the workload that is built for AI. How do you secure that? And what are some of the services that are native to your cloud provider that you may be using and how to implement the security best practices for those services in those projects. The second one would be more around third party risk management. Yes, because you're dealing with say enterprise contracts with Claude, OpenAI, which means you have third party risk that you would have to manage in your cloud environment for all those AI projects that your organization may be working on. Now talking about third party also leads me to the number three, which is business specific threat detection. Now traditionally you'll have cloud security from your cloud native tools that are provided by a cloud provider, CSPMs, CNAPs, in case you don't know what these acronyms are, it's basically telling you how bad the posture of your cloud environment is, whether how many vulnerabilities, how many misconfigurations, all of that. I've got a whole video here on this, which you can go into detail for, but for this context, building threat detection in the security services from your cloud provider or the CSPM providers usually ends up being that you have a lot of defaults that you're working on. Now, as a junior person, you're probably working on the alerts that are being raised by these cloud security products. Now, you can continue to go down to each one of those rabbit holes and identify which one is relevant, which one is a misconfiguration, which one is something that you need to raise a instant response for, which one should you ignore because of false positive. Or you could flip the script and become more of a senior where you can start thinking more broadly for, hey, it's great I have these 25 or 30 or maybe even 100 detections from the CSPM CNAP or cloud native security service but which ones make sense for the business that we are working in? Like if I am a financial institution, compliance is high up there, trust is high up there. How do I build detections that are specific for the applications you host in your cloud? Applications that may or may not be container-based, applications that may or may not be running AI. What are specific detections that you should be creating for yourself, for your business, that would be more relevant than the default set that you get from all these other CSPM CNAPs? Now, 
The two advantages over here, the first one being you already appear as smarter that because you're thinking big, you're not just going with a task-based approach, you're thinking of bigger projects. What this also means is number two, there's more efficiency in your wider team as well. Your other colleagues would look at you as, oh, someone is being really smart about this because you would reduce the overall workload for them by taking out all the false positives from there, which means reducing the overall workload, increasing productivity, and so much more. I do want to add one more in there as well. Now, these default detections from CSP and CNAPs and stuff, a lot of them only look out for selected services, which are the more popular ones, which you can understand. They are not looking after all the services. So if you are in a specific industry, say perhaps energy or retail or a specific industry that has its own compliance standards or even has services that are being used, which may not be that common and perhaps no detection exists for them in these cloud security tools or in these cloud security products, then you would have to think about customer detection from understanding, oh, okay, I have a gap of security here where the products that we're using from our cloud service provider don't have any threat detection on them, which means my custom detection focus should be building detection rules for uncommon services, which is usually done by the logs provided by a cloud service provider, as well as the application logs that you may have to work with, which is a good segue into number four, which is integrating with existing cybersecurity products. Now, chances are when you go into an organization, you're working as a junior engineer or just as cloud security engineer, you're more likely around other cybersecurity products as well. Now you have your SOC or security operations team, you have your risk team, the compliance team, all these other teams that you have working with, they all have tentacles flying into cloud security and you would have the same on to the other side as well. Like for every threat you identify in your cloud security tool, there is an equivalent risk, there's a compliance angle, there is a security operation perspective as well. There is multitudes of other services that perhaps need to be updated or referred to. So as part of being a senior, you would understand the overall application. Based on the first three, you've already identified what detection gaps you have. Second, you'll also find ways to integrate existing cybersecurity products into the resources that you have in the cloud provider, because what that allows you to do is obviously a lot more context for every threat you may detect in the cloud environment you're working on, but you're also able to find integration points that perhaps overlap. Like for example, identity access management, there's a identity access management on the other side, you have one as well, there might be dedicated teams for IAM, Vulnerability management is another overlap where there's already a vulnerability management software and you have to implement the same vulnerability management software on all the compute that's running on your cloud footprint. The same goes for endpoint security as well. You would not simply jump into the problem of, hey, how do I integrate my vulnerability management software agent into my cloud? You would take your time to understand how big is the scale of the problem? How long would you realistically take to do this? Especially if you've never done this before. Should you be collaborating with other team members to work on this? Now, a lot of this thinking is where you become more of a senior person. A junior person would simply just go, okay, I've given the instructions that you should integrate your vulnerability management software into the cloud, and you'll just go off and just start doing it without an idea for how long it would take. Would there be any cost impact of integrating a solution onto cloud? Is the vulnerability management software that you are using on-premise is even capable to do scanning in the cloud provider? What would the impact on architecture be on cloud resources that are there? And would you need to talk to multiple business units before can you can do that as well? All that and a lot more examples can be shared in terms of how you can think better about doing projects rather than solving tasks as a senior person who's trying to integrate existing cybersecurity products into your cloud environment. Number five, why, as you're building all these things, you probably want to build some automation because I mean, we're all lazy. Why do we want to keep doing the same thing again and again and again? So why not leverage the capability of infrastructure as code, CI, CD, to deploy security detection in your cloud environment, security detection in your CI, CD pipelines, maybe infrastructure as code, static analysis testing for any linting or any secrets being there, any misconfigurations being introduced by your infrastructure as code, all these different kinds of automations for every security task that you have as a cloud security person would be the difference between a junior and a senior cloud security engineer. Now, number six, this is probably, I think in my mind, the more underrated part of building that skill set to become a senior, which is soft skills. Yes, a lot of people have spoken about this, but I would say if you are not someone who can communicate with your counterparts in other businesses, like if you can't talk to people in HR, finance, other product teams, you would struggle to become a senior. 
So if you have an opportunity where you've identified a vulnerability misconfiguration in a cloud security product, you immediately find who is responsible for this, not to blame them, but to actually work with them on, hey, what is the realistic time for me to fix this? If you believe it is a high or a very high that should be looked at and has a huge business impact, then you want to be able to explain to them why you would want to raise a priority on fixing that rather than, you know what, we'll wait till the next sprint. It just cannot stop at the fact that it's an Asana or a Jira ticket. It has to go beyond that. That's what a senior person would do because next time when a manager would ask you, hey, what's happening with that vulnerability you identified? You can actually, instead of just saying, you know what, I have created an Asana or Jira ticket for the HR team and I'll, they'll look after it. Instead, as a senior person, you would be able to say, oh yeah, I was looking at it and I actually realized that the team has a busy sprint this month. So they would be able to resolve this vulnerability in the next sprint running next month. Because this was like a medium, not a high or so very high, I was okay with it. I'm sure you would be as well, unless you feel it needs to be different. And automatically your manager is going, oh wow, this person is already thinking like a senior person. I would definitely use that approach to shift your thinking on how you approach soft skills as a junior person versus as a senior person. Think bigger is how I would describe this in one word. Now working on your own in all these areas could be very daunting. You probably need help from other senior people in your organization. Now in case you don't have that many senior people in your organization who can have the time to help you. Don't worry, I got you. Cloud Security Podcast has been running the advent calendar for cloud security where a lot of senior cloud security experts are sharing their knowledge across Azure, AWS, GCP, all these things that I'm talking about so far as project areas. We're covering a lot of that in the advent calendar for cloud security. I'll leave the playlist over here for you to follow along and see all the other videos. But if you don't wanna go to the playlist and just see who's talking, head to advent.cloudsecuritypodcast.tv. It's an initiative from Cloud Security Podcast so that you don't feel lost. We are here for you. We want you to become senior in cloud security and this is us putting our time to help you out. And all these experts who are contributing into this to definitely reach out to them for more suggestions, more information. If you have any topics or projects areas that you would want us to do a deep dive on, definitely leave that as a comment as well. And I look forward to helping you more with practical cloud security instead of just talking about certifications. I'll see you next one. Peace.